So we're introducing a new app, and it's called Measure. It makes it really easy to measure objects, detect rectangles and get their dimensions, and measure lines along surfaces. And I'd like to show it to you now. Now, I'm actually in the, the Measure app. And you see, I can easily measure along this suitcase by just tapping and dragging out a line like that. And check that out. It's a measurement. Now, what's really cool is I can extend these measurements. So I can just tap, drag along another edge just like that, and even take it into full 3D by dragging down to the bottom like that. So I have a photo here, actually. It's one my mom always wanted me to travel with of uh, me as a baby. And so, <laughs> you see, what I can do with measure is it automatically detects the dimensions of that photo. I can just tap and get, oh yeah, cute little baby, wasn't I? And you can get measurements just like that. It's really fantastic. With 3D object detection, we get to recognize our models and bring them to life. And just look at all of those rich details we can now bring into our sets. Because when we combine physical and digital together like this, it really opens up those creative play possibilities. And there's so much to do here. If you see these icons above people and objects, well, they represent missions and stories that we can explore. And with a world as rich and as immersive as this, who wouldn't want to play? So let's add a character. How about this little guy here? Welcome back. Let's go on an adventure. Because now with ARKit 2, we get to see inside our physical creations and check out all the details that were hidden before. Got a ballerina, a little uh, music session going on, and uh, looks like a bathroom or something. Oops, sorry. Moving on. Oh, another play trigger in the bakery. Let's see what happens when I click on this. Fresh dresses. <laughs> oh, that doesn't look too good. Search has powerful object and scene recognition. Let you search for photos based on things like searching for cars, or dogs, or flowers. And that's a great way to explore your library. But in iOS 12, search now starts working for you even before you start typing with search suggestions. It'll highlight things for you like key moments and people that are important to you, places where you've taken some great photos, and even categories of photos like hiking and water sports. And now in iOS 12, we have an all new tab. It's called For You. And with For You, you have all of your memories, those great memory movies, but more like featured photos, highlighting a photo that you took on this day in past years. Well, afterwards in For You, you'll see a suggestion like this to share those photos. If you tap in, you'll see that Photos is even recommending a set of photos that, from that set that you might wanna share and suggest who you might wanna share them with based in part by the people that appeared in the photos. And when your friend receives them, something really magical happens. Their phone searches their libraries for other photos they took at that event and suggests that they share them back to you so you both can end up with the full set. I am so stoked to show you Siri shortcuts. To do that, I'm gonna walk you through my day. So imagine it's the morning, I'm headed to work, and I pick up my phone and I see this suggestion from Phil's Coffee. Siri has learned that I do this most mornings, so now I can just tap on the suggestion and I see all the details I need to confirm my perfect mint mojito right here on the lock screen without even going into the app. So let's get caffeinated and I'm done. I also wanna sh show you how you can add a shortcut to Siri. So let's take a look at Kayak. I keep all of my travel details in Kayak. Most important is my post -dub -dub DC relaxation trip to Los Angeles. You can see I've got my flight, my hotel, all the details, everything I need, but what I really want is to be able to use this and get to this information with my voice while I'm on the go. So let's head back, and I can just tap Add to Siri, record my custom phrase, travel plans and I am done. So now, when I land at the airport, and I'm about to get in the cab, and I could really use that hotel address, I can just say, 
Travel plans. Kayak says, your hotel is at 929 South Broadway. You can check in after 3 p.m. Isn't that cool? There, there are times of the day, or times when you just don't want to be disturbed. And one of those, of course, is at night. Sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night, and you look at your phone, maybe just to check the time, and you're confronted with something like this. <laughs> barrage of notifications that spin you up and keep you from falling back asleep. And so we're introducing Do Not Disturb During Bedtime, where all you'll see is this, nothing to get you spun up. And in the morning, yeah. In the morning when you wake up, you're gently eased into your day. You can tap when you want to start confronting those notifications. <laughs> now, we've all found ourselves in situations like this. <laughs> now, rest assured, he stuck the landing on this one. Uh, but now, Do Not Disturb can help. And we've made it easier than ever to use Do Not Disturb because now we have a great new mode where when you press into Do Not Disturb and Control Center, you can set an ending time for Do Not Disturb for when you leave a particular location or when an event ends on your calendar. So I think we're all gonna be using Do Not Disturb a bunch more. <laughs> Notifications are grouped not just by app, but also by topic and thread. It gives you a great overview of the notifications you've received. You can tap in and look at a particular group, but of course, just as important, with a single swipe, you can triage a whole group of notifications away. So that's notifications. Now, in addition to these great features for helping you limit distractions, we wanted to go further. And it's with a feature we call screen time. Screen time empowers you with both insight and control over how you spend your time. And it starts with reports. Every week, you get a weekly activity summary that details how you used your iPhone or iPad. You tap in and you get to view your full activity report. It's really detailed. You get deep insight on how much time you're spending, where you're spending it, and even how your use breaks down during the day uh, or the night. You get a summary of the time you're spending in apps, how much time you're spending, how often per hour you're picking up your phone and what's drawing you in, and what apps are sending you the most notifications. Now, equipped with this insight, you can make decisions about how much time you want to spend with your device each day. We wanted to take Animoji even further by making them even more personal. So I'm thrilled today to announce the arrival of the era of Memoji. These Animoji can look like you or the real you. And we've worked hard to build a deep set of customization options to let our customers create an incredibly diverse set of Memoji. Let me show you just how easy it is. I recently chopped my hair, so I want one that matches the new me. So I've selected a skin color, and now I'm trying to figure out just the right amount of freckles. It's a real Goldilocks scenario. Okay, on to the main event. There are so many hairstyles to choose from. First, I'm gonna grab my color, and then like I said, I need to go a little bit shorter. And what's really amazing is as I'm making changes, the character up above is coming to life. Well, I think for our first live demo of group FaceTime, I'm gonna uh, contact the folks back in Cupertino. Now I can just dive in to this conversation I have going with the members of the FaceTime team. And it looks like actually they're already on a group FaceTime call, so I'm just gonna join right in. Hey, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. Now check it out. So it's this beautiful FaceTime UI. We have these big, gorgeous tiles right up front where you see some of the leaders of the FaceTime team. And down at the bottom, there's an area we call the roster that contains everybody else. And of course, I'm right there in the lower right-hand corner. Hey, Craig. Wait, am I on the big screen? <laughs> yes, Lauren, this is not a test. Now, what you probably notice is when Lauren spoke, her tile automatically got larger to reflect her prominence in the conversation. This is totally automatic. Uh, hey, Roberto, how's it going back there in Cupertino? I'd say it's going pretty well. And uh, Lauren, sorry for stealing your spotlight. <laughs> so 
this works, of course, for people in the roster as well. When they speak, they come forward. Uh, hey, Christopher, you ready to make your big entrance? Finally, my moment has come. Hello, world. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have not only all of this, but we've also brought the fun effects to the FaceTime camera. I can just tap in and I have access to Animoji, filters, and all of my sticker packs. And everyone else on the call can apply them too. Hey, Craig, check this out. I'm a comic book koala, something I've always wanted to be. Hey, Tim, is that you? Yeah, it's me. I signed up to help test FaceTime. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thank you, Tim. Every little bit counts. Happy to help, and thanks to everyone on the FaceTime team for making it a reality. I can't wait to start using it every Sunday night to call the leadership team. <laughs> Did you steal my chips? Maybe. I cannot wait till you go to college. <laughs> Introducing Walkie Talkie. <laughs> this is a new app on Apple Watch. It's a fun, easy way to talk with friends and family. Let's take a look at how it works. First, you choose who you'd like to enable Walkie Talkie with and it suggests some people that you often communicate with, so you can easily add them. Now, the first time that you do this, your friend will receive a one-time request to allow a walkie-talkie connection with you. If they, if they accept, then you can speak to each other with walkie-talkie whenever you like. And to do this, you just press to talk, and then your friend can hear your voice just like a walkie-talkie. And they're gonna feel a haptic and hear a beep-beep sound right before your voice comes out. And this new watch-to-watch -watch connection works over cellular or, or Wi-Fi and has really high audio quality, and it's a lot of fun. We can't wait for you to try this out. That's Walkie Talkie. And you heard Kevin say how Walkie Talkie is so great for staying in touch with close friends and family. So I set my daughter up with Walkie Talkie so that she can help demo what it's like to receive one and maybe give me a little bit of love up here. Oh, there she is. Mommy, I see you on TV. Isn't that fun? How am I doing? So good. I know you'll beat Uncle Jay. Hashtag mommy for the win. <laughs> Thanks, Peach. I love you. <laughs> we're making some great enhancements to the Siri watch face now. First, we're adding new content. So now you can get live sports scores. You can get commute time home or to work. Or you can see your heart rate, for example, after a workout or your resting heart rate. And we're also adding Siri shortcuts. Those shortcuts you saw coming to iOS 12 are also going to be available in watchOS. So in addition to getting relevant information, you'll also receive predicted shortcuts right on the Siri watch face. And when you think about this, it's quite a strong signal when you raise your wrist and talk to your watch. It's kind of like when someone's standing right in front of you. You don't need to say, hey, because you have their attention already. So we're bringing this same social cue to Siri on the watch. So you no longer need to say, hey, Siri. You just raise your wrist and talk to Siri. Apple TV 4K is bringing you the latest in audio technology. Dolby Atmos. With Atmos, you get room filling sound, the perfect complement to the stunning visuals of Apple TV 4K. Now, what makes Atmos so special? is that unlike a traditional surround sound setup where sound is assigned to channels like the left or the right, Dolby Atmos has the ability to completely immerse you. Atmos moves sound in three-dimensional space, creating an experience with powerful audio that flows all around you. And just like with 4K HDR, your iTunes libraries will be upgraded to include Dolby Atmos on all supported titles for free. Our next release of macOS is macOS Mojave. So here we are live in macOS Mojave. And I'd like to show you a new side of Mojave. We call it dark mode. Dark mode is not just about the dock or the menu bar. It extends to your Windows Chrome, your sidebar, and even the content of the windows. And it's so great for pros. It makes photographic content absolutely pop off the screen. And this is great not just for photography, but when working on presentations or documents. 
It's also great doing ordinary things if maybe you're working in a dark environment. You just look at calendar and even mail in dark mode. It's so great. And I think some of us are going to want to run dark mode just because it's so cool. I mean, your emoji look great. Your photos look great. I mean, check out your album art and music. But I think one audience that's going to especially appreciate dark mode are some of you here in this room are developers because Xcode looks fantastic in dark. That's a quick look at dark mode. All of the contents of your desktop are automatically arranged into these stacks. And they can be arranged by kind, by date, or even by tag. And they're really easy to use. You just click on them. You can see all the contents in the stack. You can double click to open a document and put it away. And they stay organized. So for instance, if I bring forward mail, maybe I drag an image out, I want you to watch what happens because the image flies right into the right stack. Now, you can also scrub your stacks. So for instance, I'll just scrub across this stack. You see I can select between different photos, pick one up. Actually, let me just hide mail here, mid-drag. Got a little excited with, my, uh, with all of my stack action. So I can just drag this out and drop it in just like that. And that's a quick look at Stacks. So we've redesigned an all new Mac App Store from the ground up and we're thrilled to show it to you now. It's got a beautiful UI that should feel familiar, but new and designed first and foremost to be a great Mac app. Starting with the new Discover tab, where each week you can find in-depth editorial about the best Mac apps. Here's the Create tab, where you can find apps that bring your artistic ideas to life. These tabs will also help you make the most of apps you might already have, with tips and tutorials even the most expert users will find useful. The Work, Play, and Develop tabs share the same beautiful design and you can still browse by category on the Categories tab. We've redesigned product pages too, bringing many features over from iOS based on our learnings there. It has more useful information like video previews available on the Mac App Store for the first time, and apps rank if it's charting and if it's been named Editor's Choice. Ratings and reviews are now front and center. And these are so important for app discovery. So we're introducing a ratings and review API for Mac apps. Now it'll be easier than ever for people to leave feedback.